For many people, the only word more frightening than cancer is chemotherapy. Often, for many, that word feels even heavier than the diagnosis itself. Every year, thousands of cancer patients around the world choose to say no to chemotherapy. Some reject it from the very beginning. Others stop partway through. Why would anyone refuse treatment that could save their life? And what really happens when they do? Today, we're going to explore the reasons people refuse chemotherapy, the science behind what happens next, and the stories, some tragic, some inspiring, of patients who face this decision at the most critical moment of their lives. This is not medical advice. It's an exploration of choices, risks and realities. Always speak with your doctor about your personal situation. When most people imagine cancer treatment, they imagine chemotherapy. But for many patients, chemo is not just a treatment, it's a fear. The fear of side effects is one of the most powerful reasons people refuse. Hair loss, nausea, mouth sores, overwhelming fatigue, even permanent infertility. Some fear chemo brain, the foggy memory and mental sharpness that can linger long after treatment ends. Others worry about nerve damage, a burning tingling in their hands and feet called neuropathy. And some are even told that a rare but real risk of chemotherapy is developing a second cancer later in life. The idea of trading today's health for the chance of tomorrow can feel unbearable. For others, the decision is about quality of life. They've seen loved ones endure months of suffering, only to gain a few extra weeks. They decide that time spent feeling like themselves, not like a patient chained to an IV drip, is worth more. Then there's distrust. Some patients see chemotherapy as part of a profit-driven system. They read articles online, watch videos, or hear stories of natural cures that seem to offer gentler answers. Take Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple. In 2003, he was diagnosed with a rare pancreatic neuroendocrine tumour. Doctors urged him to have surgery immediately, but Jobs delayed for nine months, turning instead to vegan diets, acupuncture, and herbal remedies. By the time he finally underwent surgery, it may have been too late. Jobs lived for another eight years, longer than many expected, but many experts believe that early treatment could have extended his life even further. Or Bob Marley, the legendary musician. In 1977, doctors discovered melanoma in his toe and recommended amputation. But Marley's Rastafarian faith considered the body sacred and opposed such surgery. He refused. The cancer spread and Marley died four years later at only 36. And beyond the headlines are thousands of ordinary stories. One man with lymphoma told his doctors he wouldn't do chemo because he wanted his children to remember him smiling, not sick. A young mother said she'd rather have six months of normal family life than 18 months of misery. These decisions aren't made lightly. They are rooted in fear, in faith, in personal values, and in a desire for control when cancer strips control away. So what actually happens when someone refuses chemotherapy? The answer depends on the type of cancer. In diseases like acute leukemia, chemotherapy has long been the only treatment capable of producing long-term survival. Refusing it in those cases almost always shortened life dramatically. But in recent years, newer approaches like CART cell therapy are beginning to change that landscape. Some patients can now be treated with less or even no traditional conditioning chemotherapy. These are still emerging cases, but they show that the future may look very different from the past. In many solid tumours like breast, colon or lung cancer, chemotherapy remains a cornerstone. Studies consistently show that patients who refuse chemotherapy in these settings 
face worse outcomes. One Canadian study found that women with breast cancer who declined chemo had mortality rates up to five times higher. But there are exceptions. In early prostate cancer, for example, chemo is rarely used. And in thyroid cancer, most patients do well with surgery and radioactive iodine, never touching chemotherapy at all. The reality is that chemotherapy saves many lives, but it can also be brutal. Farrah Fawcett, the Charlie's Angels actress, was diagnosed with anal cancer in 2006. She underwent chemotherapy and radiation. When the cancer returned, she refused more of the same and instead travelled to Germany for experimental treatments. Sadly, she died in 2009. Her story highlights both the hope and the desperation that come when standard options run out. It's important to understand that modern chemotherapy is not always the horror we imagine. Anti-nausea drugs, targeted dosing and supportive care have improved the experience for many patients. And with newer treatments like CART, chemotherapy is often given in much lighter conditioning regimens, sometimes just enough to prepare the immune system, instead of the heavy cycles patients once endured. But even with these advances, the fear remains. And sometimes it outweighs the numbers. When patients refuse chemotherapy, their journeys often take one of three paths. Some turn to alternative therapies, special diets, high-dose vitamins, coffee enemas, cannabis oil, mistletoe injections in Europe, or the long-debunked drug Letrile. These approaches rarely have solid scientific proof. For many, precious time is lost while the cancer advances. Others seek out clinical trials. This can be life-saving. Sharon Belvin was just 22 when she was diagnosed with advanced melanoma. She refused chemotherapy and instead joined a trial testing one of the first immune therapies, a CTLA-4 antibody. Against all odds, Sharon's cancer vanished. Today, she's alive, raising her children. And proof that sometimes saying no to chemo means saying yes to innovation. We're also beginning to see this with CART therapy in blood cancers like lymphoma and leukemia. Patients who once faced only chemotherapy can sometimes achieve long-lasting remission with these engineered immune cells. And some patients choose palliative care. They focus not on cure, but on comfort, living fully in the time they have. Gilda Radner, the beloved Saturday Night Live comedian, explored holistic approaches before starting chemo late. She wrote about her fear and confusion openly. She died in 1989, but her story fueled awareness of ovarian cancer and the creation of support networks that still help patients today. Refusing chemo doesn't always mean giving up. Sometimes it means fighting differently. Sometimes it means focusing on life, not treatment. And sometimes, tragically, it means the disease gets the final say. Refusing chemotherapy is never just a medical decision. It's personal. It's cultural. It's psychological. Doctors can make it harder when they push too aggressively, leaving patients feeling cornered. On the other hand, not every alternative path is safe, and misinformation online can be deadly. That's why second opinions are so critical. Sometimes a different oncologist will offer a gentler regimen, a clinical trial, or reassurance that chemo is truly the right choice. And sometimes respect is the most important medicine of all. Respecting that patients are not statistics. They are mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, human beings who weigh survival against suffering in ways no study can fully capture. Fear also plays a role long before or after treatment. Many patients live with scanxiety, the fear of follow-up scans showing a recurrence. For some, refusing chemo is less about science and more about avoiding that constant reminder of sickness. 
Chadwick Boseman, the Black Panther star, kept his colon cancer diagnosis private. He chose silence, enduring treatment while filming blockbuster movies. His story wasn't about refusal, but it showed the deeply personal ways patients carry the burden of cancer, often unseen, often misunderstood. Silence itself can be a form of refusal, a refusal to be defined by illness. When we talk about refusing chemo, we're really talking about autonomy, about dignity, about the right to make a choice, even when it goes against the odds. Refusing chemotherapy is one of the most difficult decisions a person can face. For some, it shortens life. For others, it opens the door to alternatives or trials that change the course of medicine. Behind every choice is a story of fear, courage, and hope. If this video helped clarify anything for you or someone you care about, please take one second to like this video, subscribe to the Second Opinion Network. It's free and you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded and share it with someone facing this decision. It might be the most important thing you do for them today. And one more thing I'd love to hear from you. What topics do you want us to cover in future episodes? Leave your suggestions in the comments below. Your ideas could help thousands of people who are searching for clarity right now. I'm Peter, and this is the Second Opinion Network. Until next time, stay informed, stay strong, and stay supported.